what's up you guys my name is Amber welcome to my channel and today we're going to be talking about Night World number three which includes the novels Huntress, Black Dawn, and Witchlight. I know that it has been a hot minute since I have done a review in my Night World series. I don't actually have a particular reason for that because I finished them like all of them consecutively. Let's go ahead and jump right into it. And for the summary part I am straight up just going to be looking at my notes since it has been so long since I wrote them. I don't want to pop them off the top of my head and get them wrong. In Huntress, we meet Jez, a true Redfern vampire in every sense, until she discovers her mother was actually a human, which breaks all Night World law and resulted in the death of both of her parents. Now, her entire identity shattered, she must learn to live with being a secret outlaw of the Night World. While doing so, she rejects the vampire side of her and becomes a vampire hunter instead. But when approached by her friend Hugh needing help, she must go back to her roots and fight her way back into the vampire gang she abandoned. To do so, she faces Morgad, her longtime frenemy who replaced her as leader of the gang, but results in discovering her soulmate. Now on the quest to find a wild power, one of four people prophesized to be able to save the end of the world, or to be able to save the world as it exists, they quickly find out that Jez's cousin Claire is the wild power after a life-threatening situation that would have left them dead otherwise. Or is she? When Jez, Claire, Hugh, and Morgad are all trapped by a returning Lily Redfern, we have to wonder which of them is really the wild power. Black Dawn introduced us to Maggie, who is immediately woken by her mother screaming. She goes downstairs to discover a scene in which her brother's girlfriend Sylvia is explaining how her brother died while on a hiking trip that they went on. Convinced that she's lying, Maggie follows Sylvia when she slips away down the street unnoticed. Back at the girlfriend's apartment, a party is going on with some strange people and Maggie tries to confront Sylvia with only a dismissive and threatening response before passing out from being drugged. She wakes to find herself and a few others in the back of the vehicle where she discovers she's been sold into slavery for the most secret part of the night world. After Communicating with the other girls trapped in the vehicle, she proposes a plan to give them a chance to escape, until she discovers that one of the girls is both sick and blind. Refusing to leave her behind, they go through with the plan anyway, with Maggie taking personal responsibility for Katie. Narrowly escaping being attacked with the help of a vampire boy, who naturally turns out to be a red fern, the ruler of this part of the night world, a wild power, and Maggie's soulmate. But that doesn't mean much since Delos has no interest in further involvement and warns Maggie to leave immediately. She doesn't listen, however, and seeks out help for Katie, where they meet up with the other escapees who manage to break into the castle to get help and discover that Maggie fulfills a prophecy of being the Deliverer, the one who will free all those enslaved. With all hope riding on her, will she manage to live up to the name? Witchlight starts us off in the middle of a hunt. Three of the best Night World members Circle Daybreak has to offer are on a mission to find the human-raised witch wild power before vampires do. Scoping out a shopping mall, the girls are too late to find the wild power first, but are not too late to try and stop the vampires. Except, the vampires somehow manage to awaken a dragon shapeshifter and get it on their side. An incredible feat considering the witches put all of the dragons to sleep 30,000 years ago. Keller, a black panther in disguise, strikes at the dragon, still in human form, to try and get the upper hand, but the dark power coming off the dragon is almost too much to bear. Not that she has to worry about it for very long, because a mysterious boy comes and speaks to her through her mind and gets her to let go of the dragon. The vampire group escapes, but the good guys, joined by the boy Galen, have the witch child, Eliana, and get away to a safe house. Joined by Grandma Harmon, crone of all witches, they have to convince Eliana that they're not trying to kidnap her, that she's a wild power and the only hope for Circle Daybreak to win the fight and stop the end of the world. Unconvinced and hysterical, naturally, Eliana has no interest in listening, so they decide a plan for the other four team members to stay with her to keep her protected as long as possible while trying to convince her to join their team. And at this point in the book, I realized that my copy is actually like up in the printing because it literally goes from like it was totally fine until page 579 and then it reprinted 507 to 538 and then skipped forward to 603. <laughs> so in total there's like 33 pages that are just completely missing from my copy. I don't know how they like missed such a huge printing error and I don't know if it's like just my copy or if it was a whole batch of them. Um, I'm actually kind of curious if anybody has ever read or like seen the book did anybody else have like their copy fucked up with printing or uh is that just 
a me problem. So I had to google some summaries to fill in the gaps. According to the fandom wiki for the series, Galen professes his affection for Keller to her dismay, but they discover that they're soulmates, which is a problem because he is promised to Ileana. They go all go to school with Ileana, where some brief goes down where Keller pounced on like Ileana's best friend Jamie and was in partial panther, partial human state. And then outside, Jamie is almost hit by a car and Ileana tries to summon the wild power to save her and isn't able to. So Galen knocks her out of the way and they both end up bruised but alive. And then that's where my actual copy cuts back in and then is back to my notes. Keller realizes that because of Galen saving Jamie, Ileana is now falling for him and Keller makes sure to tell him that it's okay, like not to worry about her feelings, like everything's all good. But Ileana is convinced that she's not the wild power because she wasn't able to summon it when needed. Um, but no one else is doubting her status. After some devastating news, we discover some of the shapeshifter backstory, which hasn't really been mentioned in any of the books so far, and Ileana decides to go through with a promising ceremony to unite the witches and shapeshifters, even though she's still convinced she is in a true wild power. But she has conditions. To look for the real wild power in the meantime, and to go to Jamie's party. But the party is a trap, which leads to a final showdown. Will the true wild power make themselves known to win the fight? And that is where we leave off with this volume of the series. And I am going to like go ahead and say right now, this isn't the last of the series. However, it is the last of the series that has been published so far. We are technically supposed to be getting one more book in the series, which is going to be the entire series finale. But if I'm not mistaken, it's been like over 20 years since the last one was published. So if and when we ever get the series finale is highly debatable. But I'll do a whole video about that another time. As it stands, this is just the next three books in the series. I do think that simultaneously the books are some of the strongest out of the whole series so far, but also some of the least realistic. I do quite like a lot of the characters that were introduced in this one and a lot of the character dynamics, but there are several situations that just really are not that realistic and I feel like aren't exactly how things would go if this were actually happening in real life. I feel like as opposed to the last uh, volume, like the last three books that we got, where it was, I don't know, I feel like the first set of three, we got a really solid vibe for how the night world works, and they were all very, very similar plot lines. And then the second set of three, so volume two, threw us with a little bit of a curveball because like the first one didn't really feel like it kind of fit in with the series but then the next ones did and then this one does feel like it fits in with the series but in different ways than like we've seen before that really doesn't make a lot of sense but like i feel like we get to see a lot more of the inner workings and some of the politics of the night world um at least some of the politics in the way that like we get to see this one kind of hidden island that is like the secret part of the night world and is how it like traditionally has been for all of time and how like backwards their society is and then we also get to see more of Circle Daybreak doing some of their own actual missions and trying to bring about change whereas previously we've heard of Circle Daybreak and people arriving into Circle Daybreak, but not about what they have established for themselves and what they've actually been doing to fight the battle against the traditional night world. And so we got a lot more of that in this installment, which is good because it is the lead up to the finale of the series. I do like how the book left off. Um, the final kind of showdown in um, Witchlight, Witchlight's the last book. Um, so I do like how they left off the final showdown, but and it almost kind of, like it's weird because there has been a publicly like known and like very um, expected and anticipated series finale to the books. But at the same time, it was almost written in a way to where I could kind of see the author doing a, like, like it wasn't left on such a cliffhanger that everyone is like oh my god like we need to know what happens it's kind of more so like 
like I almost feel like the author kind of tried to wrap things up without it being the series finale in case the series finale never got finished if that makes sense. So like there are definitely a lot of unanswered questions and we do obviously still want to see what happens with the final fate of the night world and the entire like world as we know it but at the same time I feel like a lot of people's individual story arcs were completed within the three volumes that we got. You know it doesn't totally seem like it because like when I give my summaries I leave it off on a cliffhanger because like I don't want to completely reveal the entire book to you. I definitely like try and do a bare minimum like you know everything that's going on but also there's plenty of information that you didn't get so that you still want to read the book and like still have new material to read if you decide to read the book later on. But also like if you've already read the book before and it's just been a while so you don't totally remember it if I, but you want to hear my review like if I give you my summary you're gonna be like oh yeah okay that's what happens. So I try and format my um like reviews and summaries like that but you know I'm not gonna lie I do wish I could go into a little bit more specific detail with my review and my overall feelings of this volume but it's been several months since I've read it so I have since forgotten a lot of the points that I wanted to get into but I also didn't want to just leave my like night world review series on a cliffhanger even though I'm doing exactly that because we have reviews for like all three volumes so that's nine books so far and uh we don't get the final tenth because it hasn't been written yet. If any of you guys have read this series I would love to hear your thoughts down below and I would lo also love to hear any other recommendations you have for books you would like to see me review in the future. But anyways thank you guys so so much for watching. I had a blast hanging out with y'all. Peace.